Howdy folks, this is Dave Brady and we're looking at a single op amp bandpass filter sort of a unique design. If you review the literature on single op amp bandpass filters it'll tell you that on these two capacitors C1 and C2 the values of them should be identical. And that brings up the question of so what happens to the frequency response and the transient response when they're not exactly the same. So we can run a little test here by running a parametric sweep. So let me show you how to set up that parametric sweep. We'll hit the simulate design toolbar button and you'll notice the first thing it does is it regenerates the netlist to make sure that we have the current design. Under multi-run, multi-sweep, we select parametric sweep and that gives us our dialog. So we're going to go ahead and pick a device. In this case we're going to go ahead and start with C1 and we're going to vary the value not the temperature. So we're going to start off at point zero zero five microfarads and we'll stop the sweep at twice the value we currently have, so point zero two microfarads, and we'll step that up at point zero zero five microfarads. So now we have our per our parameters for a sweep on this capacitor C one setup and let's go ahead and set up the sweep on the second capacitor C2 and again we'll vary the value so we'll start off at point zero zero five microfarads in this case we'll stop the sweep a little bit higher so point zero two five microfarads and again we'll run the same kind of increment so point zero zero five microfarads and we'll add that as well. So you can see here we've got our two sweep commands set up and you know if you if you want to modify them, delete them, you can go ahead and do that. Now I could have set up um, both sweeps at the same time. I could set up my first parameter, check my second parameter box and then when I would add them I would add them both at the same time. The reason I'm doing it this way is so that I can show you that if you had um, more um, uh, values that you want to sweep in the design, you can just go through it uh, iteratively and go ahead and create as many different parametric sweeps as you wanted to. Now, I've gone ahead and I've run the simulation. The simulation does take a little bit of time to run. It is 20 different simulations. and It doesn't take too long. It takes like 10 minutes. It takes too long to do a demo. So now let's go ahead and let's look at our AC response. So in terms of SIG out, let's go ahead and see what we've got here. And we can see we've got all of these different values. Now you'll notice it's using an, an odd number prefix, so one, three, five, seven. And if we go ahead and count these things, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So we've got 20 different runs here. And if we wanted to, we could pick um, one run and, and just plot that. Or we could just plot the whole run, all of the runs at once. And you can see the, the, the bandpass filter is shifting in the frequency response range. Another way to look at that is to plot as, let's say, a polar chart and now we can see what that looks like or maybe plot as a oh, complex plane. Complex plane is interesting if we stack these up. You can see the complex plane is really just the left half of the polar chart. So you know we've got some different um, values set up here. Now if we were to look at our transient response so let's go ahead and quickly do that and I want to add SIG in to stack those together. Do a little zoom. A little tighter. And you can see what's happening here is because the the uh, bandpass filter is shifting and our input waveform is at 1700 Hertz which is what our original design was for as the capacitor values are shifting around and the frequency response is changing 
our output is getting attenuated when it's not um, perfectly lined up. So you can see that as we move around, the different signals are either working correctly or we're seeing a lot of degradation in the amplification. So the bandpass filter is certainly is working and it shows some of the sensitivity of the design to the value of those capacitors. So let's take a little bit closer of a look here. And maybe this case, let's just go ahead and oh, plot one of these. And I think I showed you this before in other demonstrations, but if you want to quickly understand the uh, characteristics of your signal, you can just uh, drag and drop your signal in and now we can uh, look at the characteristics. So you can see that on this particular sweep we've gone from uh, 3 kilohertz to 3.043 kilohertz. So this is way off in terms of our um, intended design which was 1.7. You can see this one um, is the same as that. So it's this peak here. Now we've just broken out and looked at one. So let's look at again in the transient space sig out and look at the corresponding waveform. I think it's useful to have the input waveform. So you can see that you know we're running from uh, the gain here is much smaller so we're from 1 to almost minus 1. The attenuation in terms of signal amplification when we look at all of these next to each other you can see that we don't have a, a strong response for this value. Now in the next segment I'll show you how to correlate the uh, individual responses back to the capacitor values.